palace of Dentura. My brother, my sister, one of these days we will be crowning him one of the kings of Dentura. Remember, we just lost Nana Amponsim, the third. He died in 2016. My brother, my sister, we will go deeper into the history of the people of Dentura. In the interim, this is the African History Class Friday edition. And Nana Buedu Ntiamwa is my guest. Nana, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Everything good with you? Yes, I'm very, very happy to have you. I don't know why your microphone is not is not giving me what I want to hear. All right, man. All right. Let's try it again. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Can you hear me now? I can hear you loud sure, and clear. Sure, Say sure. it again. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, the chill driver. Ah, <laughs> we are happy to have you right here in the African history class. I'm also excited to be here. All right, man. So tell me about yourself. Just a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? When were you born? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Nanabori Ntiamwa Agonaba, and I was born in Dentra, Dentra champion. But my ancestor is Nana Ikradubo, the founder of Dentra, and Nana Ousu uh, Jamedua, the founder of Oyisango, and also Nana Isiodua Pinting, and Nana Yaware, the founder of Achim Kotoku. These are my ancestors. Ancestors, yes. indeed. But professionally, I'm a geological engineer, like the Dentras have always been associated with gold mining in Ghana. Yes. Oh, yes, is sure. it Galamse? It's not Galamse. We are the, those who actually started gold mining because our customs and tradition are always with gold. That's Since right. Since the time in Suma to mm -hmm. Egypt and to old Ghana Empire and to now, we always chase gold. Yes, that denture for you. Denture! <laughs> Today we're talking about a denture. The past, the present, and the future. Sure. All right, so who did you say founded denture? Okay, before I start this one, I would like to, I would like to tell the listeners that mm. we need to open our minds mm. because... This is a very complex story. Okay. And stories about Suma, mm. about Egypt, about mm. Acadia. Mm. Egyptology was established to erase blood from our true history. So as a Sumerian history. So where did Densha, where did we begin? We began way back in Suma, 2000 BC. Where is Suma? Suma, yes. Suma is in the middle, is the Mesopotamia. Okay. In ancient Mesopotamia. Mm. Yes. And in the Sumerian uh, cosmogony, they will tell you that the God Almighty is Enu, which is Edu. And then shall we say Trinidu and Ponkwame, which means the God Almighty. And his son is Inyame. So after the Sumer civilization came out, that's why if you look at Gudia of Lagash, you see that Gudia of Lagash is clad in the Dentra style of clothing. Mm. After that kingdom fell down, uh, the Sumer civilization fell. We re-established re Arcadia and Babylonia, and it also fell. But at that time, our brothers, the Nubians, the Nubi, children of the water, that is the N N Nile River, that's the Gan people. They were there. And also the Kushites, who had established the Ethiopians. That's the Ewe brothers. They were also there. So we moved from Mesopotamia, where we were, and joined them in Egypt. At that time, they were at the Sudan, Upper Sudan and uh, Lower Egypt. And also the Kushites, who were the uh, Ewes, were mm. in the eastern part of the uh, Egypt. So they gave us the Upper Egypt. Mm -hmm. That is why if you look at the Egyptology, the Upper Egypt is full of the denture names, like Khufu. The royal name is Kufu, which is the Densha royal name. Mm -hmm. If you go to Saqqara, mm -hmm. the Saqqara pyramid is a step pyramid which Densha adapt and we use it in the royal temple so that the royals, which is the Kwan Kwan will sit on the uh, Saqqara temple and watch and watch over the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's if you go to Saqqara, you realize that most of the uh, pharaohs who were, who were embalmed there were embalmed with slaves because the Densha customs, our kings are supposed to bury the slaves and they are embalmed and they also be buried with gold and other an ornaments. After that uh, kingdom fell, we moved to West Africa, which is Mali. Do you know what year this was? Yes, uh, it was uh, 2002 BC, uh, 1220, uh, 1220 BC. 1220 yes. 1220 yes. BC. Yes, you understand. Before the birth of Christ. Before the, no, no, no. Africa had established ancient civilization before even Christianity came into existence. Mm. And I was happy when you mentioned uh, Akhenaten. Mm. You know, Akhenaten was the one who brought monotheism. Yes, yes. You understand? Right. Mm. And in Dentra, the deity that God, the gods, or the kingdom is what we call the Tutu. Mm. Tutu deity. Mm. And the Tutu deity is represented by a lion. That was when you come to Dentra. Every uh, palace, we put lion in front of it. If you look at the great sphinx, it is a lion with a human head, right? Mm. That is the Tutu deity. But the, that's why if you look at uh, uh, Richard, uh, 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 Richard Karl, who is a fan of uh, German Egyptology, mm. he was like, when we went to Egypt, mm. we had wanted to see e Egyptians because they thought the Egyptians were white. Mm. But what we saw was true Negroes. 
black people who established the Egyptian civilization. Yeah, that's correct. You understand? Mm, mm. And W.E. Ellis, the founder of uh, English uh, Egyptology, mm. when you translated him of Osiris, he said that Osiris, whose car, which he referred to car as soul, it is not car, it is kra. Mm. It is a pure word for soul. Mm. Whose soul is pure, you understand? Mm. So we brought our traditions with our Nubians, that's our Gamp brothers and our Everest. We also came down here. But when we came down here, the name that we brought along was the Wu people. Mm. The Wu people. Mm. So we, when we got to uh, Bunong Ahafu at that time, we called it the Bunong Manso there because we were moving from the grassland to uh, the, the forest bed. Okay. So you came all the way from Suma, exactly. right? You are talking about a denture. Denture. All the way down to Egypt. Exactly. To Upper Egypt specifically. Exactly. And then you came to West Africa. Exactly. And then straight to Bono. Exactly. Can you tell me where you went in West Africa or Africa before you got to Bono? Yes, we were in the, the Ghana, old Ghana Empire, the Mali. Mm. We were there with the Dogons. Okay. You see, and when you go to South Africa, we have what we call the Bakwames. Mm. They also from they were also with us mm. in Egypt. Mm. So the Dogons are the masters of our astronomy. Of course. So we were in the Mali, we were in mm. Mali. You understand? Mm. That's the Musa and Oko. We established the Ghana Empire. Mm -hmm. Ghana Empire fell when the uh, Mohammedans tried to impose their religion on us. Yes. So we right. had to move down here. Mm. You understand? Mm. So we moved down here. When we came, the Adrianes, that is the uh, Akomu people, they passed through Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. Ani. You understand? But we, we passed through the uh, north and came down here. Okay. And our brothers, who are the Nubians, the Gans, and the Arabs, they passed through Ilife, Nigeria, mm. and passed through Benin to Togo and met us here. Right. But we, we moved from the north, uh, Mali Empire, mm -hmm. and we came down south here. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Okay. That's what we okay. So you did not move with the Ashantis and the rest of them? No. Ashantis, where we taught them our customs and traditions. Okay. If you understand. Mm. When we came to Bono, we met a lot of people here. We met the Bonomansu people. We met mm. the Inchara people. Mm. Our name was Adeu people. Mm. So the Inchara chief at that time gave us a place to stay. Mm. So after that, you know, in Akan, when you depend on somebody for land and those things, you say, what dying? Mm. You depend, what dying? Mm. So when we, because we were dependent on the Inchara for land, mm. we became the Dan Inchara people. Mm. So it's this Adeu, Adeu Denchara, Pentempremenus, mm. which means Adewu, Adewu Dencha, mm -hmm. the quicksand that swallows the elephant. I see. That was the style of our kingdom. And our kinship and our methods were very different. Okay. So from Entra, which is the Bono, we moved down here to the southern at Adansi area. We established the Tutume. Like I told you that when we were coming, because of the Egyptian tradition we were holding, mm. the Tutume was the Tutu deity we brought from Egypt, mm. which are represented by a lion, mm. Leo, representing the serial star system. Okay. You understand? Yes. So then she brought it here. Tutumbe. So we, uh, we stayed at Tutumbe in 1500. Mm. And our leader at that time was Nana Ayekra Adobo. Okay. But quick, uh, quick recap. When we were at Enchira, we had a great uh, ancestress who was called Bomasi. Mm. Bomasi gave birth to three people. Uh, Agobami, they were they all female. Agobami, Anode Noho, and Siama. The Agobami line were those who founded the Enchira. The Anodin Ohon line were those who founded the Achim Kotoku Kingdom. Okay. And the Siama people were those who founded the Bojisango Kingdom. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's right. Yes. So when we go to Tutume, Tutume was named after our Tutu deity. Mm. Nana Ekrad, but who was a priest from the Agobami? Mm. It is true that Agobami that we had Agona people. Agona Nanam, which means the descendant of Ago. Okay. They became the Agona clan of the Hakans. So in all these dynasties, tell me where. Would you fit Mumunufi? Mumunufi mm. comes. I'll come. I'll, I'll come to Mumunufi. Okay. Because Mumunufi is somebody who's so powerful. Mm. And I need to take my time and explain to you. Okay. So at Tutumbe, mm. that was when Anna Ekrad boy established Tutumbe. Mm. So at Tutumbe, Anna Ekrad boy was a priestess. Okay. A, a chief priestess and a king at the same time. Mm. So this one Saturday, she enchanted during her trance. You know, during her trance, a stool descended. And that was a pearl from the sky mm. and landed an oil palm tree. It was a pearl used to in 1500. You understand? So that too became the soul and spirit of Densha called Bankamja. Mm. You understand? Nana Ekadabo was the one who established the spiritual philosophies for Dentures and other accounts within the Adansi area. Mm. She established the Akwesidae, the Fodro, the Fofie, and Odra mm. to cleanse the uh, states and the kingdom. 
So after Nana I cried about, she was the one who brought palanquin mm. because she was a priestess. Anytime her spirit descends, they carry her in apa. You understand to lead the procession, which means apa kind, the apa which leads palanquin. So Nana I cried about the one who brought palanquin in a can governance system. I see. So yes. So the first time we saw the palanquin yes. right here in this part of the yes. world was from the Dentra people. Dentra people. Then I I credible. Everything about Dentra looks so weird and different to those who were already here. Including the Ojura Festival. Exactly. So the Ojura Festival is originally an um a, a, Den a Dentra A Dentra festival. festival. I see. And of course today we started celebrating in 1500. Okay. Even a group of people started celebrating in 1826 after the Dodua War. Okay. So a group of people started celebrating after 326 years. Mm. You understand? Okay. So the bank manager gave Nana Ikrad the instructions that it would be the uh, spirit that would teach the other Akan people traditions and governance. Right. And that the Dencha people are supposed to teach those people traditions and governance. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, and that the, the, the bank just tool is the always the, will be the steward of the power that will select the leader or the king of the entire. And the three brothers, which is Achim Kutoku, they are not in the bloodline, they same bloodline, will do the traditions for the selected leader. But after Nana Ekradbo passed on, he was succeeded by Nana Enimpenyi, his son. Nana Enimpenyi also came, continued the tradition, like the Ujura, the Akweside, he did all those things. He also passed away, succeeded by Nana Ehi. Nana Ehi passed away, succeeded by Nana Aha. Mm -hmm. After Nana Aha, that is where the story got interested. Mm. That is where Mumufi came in. Mm. So when Mumufi came in, Mumufi moved the people from Tutumbe, which was closer to Adansia Kuchre, to Abankesiesu. But before that, the king of Adansia at that time was Nana Uti Brekun Asari. Nana Uti Brekun Asari goes so arrogant and then because of Dencha. He decided to attack the Dencha people. And Nana Mumufi made him uh, uh, realize that the Adansia people swear by Afnakwa. Which was brought by Sasabron Sam, by the dentures, they deal with Bankamja. Mm. Bankamja was powerful than Adansi. So Mumufi just vanquished Uti Brekwan Asare. And Mumufi appointed a Radibasa, son of Nana U uh, Minti Asare, to lead the Adanses. Mm. And in denture tradition, whenever you became a vessel of denture, right. we will push our customs and traditions to you. Mm -hmm. The when Mumufi moved to uh, Abankesia, so mm. those people at Tutumbi, some of them moved to Latte. And the latter chief at that time gave them the Tutu area. He asked them, Where do you come? He said, We came from Tutu. Tutu me. That's where the Tutu people at Latte. They came from, they told they came from Anansi. Mm. But just now that they are dangerous. Okay. Tutu you understand? So after we moved, uh, Nana Mumu, if you moved them to uh, Abankesia, so he was the same, he was known as Rempiampim. You understand? So Rempiampim, who established the 77 states or boroughs of Dentra, mm. he was the one who brought in the immediate drums. Mm -hmm. The immediate drums were 77. Go back. I want you to go back. Mm. Nana Mumufi conquered Utibra Kwansari in 1640, mm. right? Mm. Appointed a Rade Basa mm. to lead the uh, dances. When a Rade Basa went to uh, Nana Mumufi's part, he saw that there was somebody who was standing there holding a staff. You understand? And whenever anybody wants to greet Nana Mumufi or Rampiampium, he has to greet that person first. So Mumunifi was not the first king of um, Dentra? No, 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 no. Mm. He was the one who came to expand the kingdom and try to push the traditions of Bankemja, the customs, to other tree-speaking people. So he was like Osei Tutu of the Ashanti, right? He was more of Opokuare of the Ashantis. Okay. Because Ayekradiba was the one who established the Densha kingdom. Mm. You understand? Mm. And he came to expand it and push the traditions into other Akan people. Mm. So after that, the Adansis became under, came under the Dentures. Mm. And when the Basa visited the palace of Nanamu, you saw that he was having this person who was standing before him. And before you want to talk to Mumufi, you have to ask permission from that person. So we called the soul washer, Krejina for mm. one was standing, one was sitting. So when the Rade Basa went to his palace, he also took one. He also appointed somebody to be the interpreter for him. So if you want to talk to the Rade Basa, you talk to that person. If, if they now also want to talk to you, that person will also interpret. We call him Ochiami. Right. The Adansi say is of the Nani Rade Basa who brought Ochiami. But the Nani Rade Basa copied that thing from Mumufi, mm. which was Pyam Pyam. But it was Rade Mumufi who even installed Rade Basa as Adansi chief. You understand? Mm. And then she ruled the mother I can't state with power. Mm. And we, Kwamai was under S, Ejusu was under S, Esumina was under S, all the other states we knew were under Densha. And before you could become any Densha versus state chief, 
You have to be brought to Densha Palace. I see. Yes. Where was the palace? Was it in Jukwa? No, it was at Abankesia. So okay. it's confusing. Mm. The location of Abankesia at that time was Amiya Kwanta. Mm. Or that Puanu area there. That was where the palace was. Mm. So you'll be sent there to learn the traditions and customs of Dentures before you, you could become a chief under the Dentures state. Was it the biggest ethnic Akan group at the time? At that time, yes. Because it conquered Adansi. Okay. It extended to Kifu. You understand? Mm-hmm. And it was going up a offense. So all those people were under denture. Mm. Mampon and all those people were under denture. Okay. So my guest is Nana Boedu in Tiamua. He is a palace historian and he's telling us about the denture rasa. Now we're going to break him down and he's going to tell us a lot of other things that we'll be so much interested in. We are talking denture today. Tomorrow, and of course, yesterday, no two weeks about that. This is the African history class, and my name, Black Rasta. Okay, now tell me this. We are talking about the Dentura. Yes. We've talked about their kings. We've talked about this. Now, you might mention that the Denturas actually taught the Asantis so many different things, right? Yes. Things like what? Apart from the festivals? Apart from the festivals. Mm. Even the core people, the 70 say about 70 percent of Ashantis are dangerous. Okay, they are dangerous, mm-hmm. and I'll come in. 70 percent of all Ashantis yes, are, are dangerous. Mm. Yes, you see, after Nana Mumufi Brampian Pim died, it was Nana Bodu Akafu Brampon. Nana Bodu Akafu Brampon was actually a female. So when he beca- uh, she became the king of Dentra or the queen of Dentra, mm. the Adansi Hene, that's the uh, Radibasa, thought that because a, a female was leading Dentra, he could just conquer and just liberate themselves. So he attacked Dentra and Nana Bodoka Febrampong vanquished the Radibasa in 1664. I see. Yes. When he died, one was the one they still chose. At that time, he was eight years old. You understand? One became the king. After Bombazin became the king, and Bombazin was the one who's, who was using the golden stool. Mm. At that time here in Akan, we have three kingdoms that had the golden stool. Okay. Then Shah had one. Mm-hmm. That was what Bombazin. That's yeah. why we say Bombazin, the one who uses money as bed and sleeps on, or this is Kato and Pandas. Mm. Everything Bombazin used in the state was gold. I see. When I came here at the four court day, I saw the chiefs and the queens dressed in gold. It was mm. as, actually started by Buam Quincy. I see. Then chiefs were those who were dressed, whose skins dressed with gold. Okay. You understand? And we were those who built the gold too. Okay. And we were those who had the first uh, music that our gold, our stool descended from the sky. Oh, okay. Yes. And, and because of that, when Buam Quincy was a king, our mind people were supposed to come and learn traditions from there. Uh, hold it, hold it there. You said the first time we saw the golden stool dropping from the skies, it fell from the denture. Yes, it was, a, it was a golden pearl. It was beast. Beats? Yes. There, it was beast, golden beast. Not golden stool. Yeah, golden beast. Not and golden stool. stool. And it's landed from the sky to denture. Let me get it from Yes. Me. Was it golden stool with beads or beads? It was a golden beast and cl- uh, clad in the stool. That was called the bank jar. So it was a golden stool that had beads around it. Yes. And we have the no, it was a normal stool with a golden beast okay. around it. All right. That's the bank jar. So That's it the, was not a golden stool. Yes. But I'm it was a wooden stool. Yes. It, but I'm going to say built for himself a golden stool. Okay. That so, he sat on it in public. Hold it there. Yes. So you had a stool that came from the sky. Exactly. Which was garnished with golden beads. Exactly. How did it come? Who did you also have a call for? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's why I said it was brought down by Nana Aikra Adubo, the one who established the Dentra Kingdom. She was a priestess okay. and a king at the same time. Mm. It came on Saturday. That is why in Akan, in Dentra system, we don't do funerals on Saturdays because we regarded that day as holy. Because that was the day the stool descended. You understand? Mm. But one point same, Rampian Pim made for himself a golden stool that he sat on it in public. Where is the original wooden stool? The original golden stool. That, no, the original wooden stool. It is there. Mm. The bank of it is there. Mm. Yes. And the one that... Have you seen it before? It is there. It is in the palace. Have you seen it before? It is not everybody that privy to see it. Who, who are those who see it? In the, we call it the black stool of a kingdom. The black stool of a kingdom is being seen by the Ebushima Penini, okay. the Ohima, and the new uh, king. You understand? Mm. Yes. And the one, because of that, the bank was not brought outside. So for that matter, the Densha King, Rampiampim, made for himself a golden stool. 
That is sat on it in public. Hold on about this golden stool in public. Yes. I'm more interested in the wooden stool that is hidden. Yes. Now tell me, what is the importance of this stool? What was it for? Yes. That's what is important. When he descended, mm. the bank of Judah told Nana Ekrad about that. It's tradition and governance. It embodies the spirit of denture. Mm. And that it tradition and governance must be shared with the other tree speaking people. You understand? So that Bankem Dra is the spirit of denture. Okay. Which has golden beast. Okay. I run it. Mm. You understand? And you said it is still there. It is still there. Did somebody ever sit on it? No, you don't. Uh, you, you sit on it only when you are going to be installed as a king. Okay. That's when you you know, you'll be touched on it three times. So it is hidden in a certain room. Exactly. Oh. His name is Nana Bwedu Ntiamwa. And he's a palace historian. He's a professional, um, what engineer? Geological engineer. Geological engineer. All right, so he's telling us that he saw the first time we heard about a stool dropping from the sky. It was not actually with the Ashantis. No, no, it was a dentures. And because it, when Buan Poinsin became the king, like I said, the black stool, we don't bring black stool outside. Mm. The black stool is always inside. So Rampiampi made for himself a golden stool that he sat on it in public in the golden hour that he used to play. Did you have slaves? You said that when the kings died, they would have to be buried with slaves. A lot of slaves. That you had a lot of slaves. Who were your slaves? You know the Achuma people? Mm -hmm. The Achuma people? Yes. Yes, the Achuma people. Mm -hmm. You see, the, one of their chiefs, he was called Intia Momenku. Mm -hmm. He called a denture royal mm. and took the gold, you know, we, we dealt with gold, took the gold, you know, chains from them. And one point him, how to use those people as sacrificial lambs whenever a, a, a royal died. So they will slaughter people, them. Yes, because of what their ancestor what did. Who were your slaves apart from the Achuma people? Apart from the Achuma people, all the Kwamai state and all those people were our vassals. Were and the Asante your slaves? The Asante were our servants. They were those who were providing our uh, firewood. Oh, yes, and okay. they were also paying taxes to us. And actually, Densha was the first to introduce taxes. Oh wow! Into the Akan, the Akan state. I see. The Asante were paying taxes to us. Mm. Yes, they are dancing, and all our vassals they, they were paying. At that time, it was called Kwamai. Asante was called Kwamai, mm -hmm. Ejoso, Ejoso Mampon, Adansi. They all paying taxes to us. Don't pass it. Because the dentures had conquered all those areas. Conquered all those areas. And they were so powerful in the western part of Ghana. Exactly. They teamed up with the Fantis and all those people, whilst the Ekwamu people were also powerful in the eastern yes. part. I'm going to cut it very short and go into this very interesting thing. Now, Dentra is a very powerful kingdom or powerful state that conquered the Ashantis and all those people. Now, you fell somewhere in 1701 at the Fesiasi War, Fesiasi right? Fesiasi, war, Fesiasi yeah. the yeah. war, right? Under Ntim Jakari. Yes. Tell me about Ntim Jakari. Yes. Mm. When Amponsim became the king, mm. oh, people like Osei Tutu the first, he was the Kwamai. They came to study customs and tradition in the Densha Palace. Konfanochi was there. Konfanochi was there. They came to do what? In the Densha, uh, in the Densha traditions. Before you be installed in any of the Densha states, you have to come to Densha Palace mm -hmm. to learn traditions and customs of Densha. Interesting. Including yes. Ashantis. Including Ashantis. They are servants, you understand. So when uh, Buan Poinsim passed on, the two selected Nana Asensu Kufo. Do you know Nana Asensu Kufo? The mm. great great grandfather of President Kufo. Oh, I see. President Kufo is a Densha. Oh, it's a Densha. Oh, yes. Okay. So, there was a rival between Asenana Senso Kufo and Intim Jakari. Is Nana Kufo a true adventurer? No. Okay. <laughs> between Asenso Kufo and mm. Intim Jakari. Okay. But the eldest at that time, we have Nana Abrosika. Mm -hmm. Nana Abrosika was there. Nana Buampedu was there. Uh, Nana Yaware was there. They decided, they told uh, Asenso Kufo, Asenso Kufo, you know what? When Nana Buampedu was the king, he loved uh, Intim Jakari. So let's give the suit to Intim Jakari. So they gave the soul to Intim Jakari. But in 1699, Intim Jakari had a friction with Nana Asenso Kufo. Mm. And Nana Asenso Kufo got very angry and decided to leave Abankesia, so upper Abankesia, so, and move to Inkari. Mm. And when he was going, that was when the Denture kingdom started falling. Okay. Because there's two at that time, the spirit of the Denture, the Bank Kamja selected Nana Asenso Kufo. Okay. So it became like the biblical castle story of uh, uh, David and Saul. Okay. To the people of Denture, in Tim Jakari was their king, but to the students, David was their, oh, you understand? Mm -hmm. The people of Israel, Saul was their king, but to Yahweh, David was his king. Yes. So the same thing, to the people of uh, Denture, in Tim Jakari was their king, but to the Bank Kamja, Asenso Kufo was the king. Mm -hmm. So when Asenso Kufo had a friction with Intim Jakari, and he moved, a lot of the dentures followed him. 
This include Nana Abresika. Nana Abresika was a denture royal. She had a lot of uh, uh, servant and uh, and gold. So she came to Kwamai. And she was the one who married Osei Tutu the first. Mm. Yes. And the people at uh, Esue Eboa, Nana uh, Minta and Miyamua, mm. they also moved. And Nana, uh, uh, Nana, uh, Nana Mpedu, mm. Mpedu also moved with the immediate drums. The immediate drums were the 77 drums of the denture. Mm. Imagine 300 years back. Are, again they, like, are they like Phantom from Odondo? No, they are like Dundu, small drums. Small drums, yes. okay. Mm. Imagine 300 years ago, a king is coming and 77 drummers are leading him. You can imagine the state it's of the like It's like war. It's like war. Yes. So yeah. Nana Buampedu took the immediate drums to Kumasi, Kwamai. Mm. And at that, Asan Sukufo also took a huge portion of the Dencha people to Nkaria. Mm. And Tafo Hini has also moved a lot of people there. So a lot of the fragments of the Dentures had moved. And Nana Akono, I mentioned the Tutu deity, which is the Sphinx. The Egypt, we call the Sphinx. The Sphinx, The yeah. Tutu deity was invoked using the Tutu drums and the Petit drums. Mm. And Nana Akono, at that time, also moved his people mm. straight and headed to uh, Akwemu State. Mm. You understand? He was mm. the Kronkwa Hina of Dencha. He moved. And Adonte Hina of Dencha, at that time, in 1699, also moved Asatu. They also moved to Asatu. You understand? And at that time, a lot of people had moved. So when they went to the Battle of Fayas on that day, it was Friday. Mm -hmm. Tim Jackal was sitting on the golden stool of Rempia Pim, of which we call it Rempia Kunya or Ofimba. Mm -hmm. It was Friday. So when they caught a Jabin, Jabin chief who just uh, captured him, imagine you are going to a, a war and a king was there playing over it. I see. So it seems that they, he did not even take the war seriously. Mm. Because to him, he realized that no, Ashanti or Kwame was no match for him. After all, Osei Tutu the first was actually a prisoner in his in his yard. Yeah, yeah, you, you you are no match. And he freed him. Yes. And went back to try to capture yes. him again. <laughs> and Tim Jakari was a very bad womanizer. True. You see, like like I said, mm. the stool did not choose him. And whenever it's like a, 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 we are in a house eh, and there's a fetish in the house, and the person does not choose you. You cannot force the fetish to, to, to work with you. Tell me, what was Okonfo Anochi doing in the palace of Ntim Jakari? Yes, Okonfo Anochi was brought in mm -hmm. to Dentra during the time of Guam Punsim mm -hmm. to be with Dentra. There was something in Dentra, in Dentra Palace. Mm -hmm. We didn't have Suman Kwaheni. Okay. Because in Dentra, because there's two chooses, you know, the chief, the king, is also the priest at the same time. Okay. But during Guam Punsim, they brought in Okonfo Anochi to serve as the Suman Kwaheni. Together with a comfort chine chine. So that was when a comfort learned the secret of the Dentra Kingdom. A comfort what? Chine chine. Yes. Mm. So a comfort learned the secret of the Dentra Kingdom. Mm. The Dentra Kingdom is made up of three people. Mm. The, the Bajusang people will bring in the Busumbura Fana, mm. the Bute Kudu, Busumburu Che, and all those things to reinforce the power of the Dentra Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you know how the Achimkutoku people were the middle people who mm. strengthened the kingdom. That's right. So a comfort learned all these secrets. So during that day, he, told, he even told Ashanti that even one ring, one military ring of Denchira, you people cannot even conquer wow. unless I divide the kingdom. Wow. So when Nana Asansu Kufo moved in 1699 with all those people, with the Achuma people, with the uh, uh, Tafu was already there. Are you suggesting that it was Okonfanochi who divided the Denchira? The, the kingdom had already divided because at that time, the two were supposed to have given to Asansu Kufo, mm -hmm. but he didn't give to and give it to and gave it to uh, Intim Jakari. So uh, there was this internal friction. So the drums that were supposed to be used to invoke the power of the Sphinx or the lion, yes, it was gone. Uh, yeah, yeah, with Nana, another group, Nana right? Nana took it to Akwemu. Mm. So even in Nana, Nana Akono, he helped the Nana census recruit for war. So in 1702, the Densha who was Nana Akono, even became the king of Akwemu people from 1702 to 1724. You understand? Mm. Nana Akono was not an Akwemu man. Mm -hmm. He was from Densha. So after he became the king of Akwemu, there was a friction and he had to move his people to Vume. When you are going to, you see the. I know Vume. I know Vume. My people well. are from Dentra. Mm -hmm. And see. up to now, they are those who have the Dentra, Tutu drums and the Apeti drums for invoking the Tutu god, which is the Sphinx of Egypt. It is with them. But they call themselves Eves. No, because one, when they got there, when they got there, the original name was Hume, which means rest. Mm. You understand? When they go there, Nana Akono established the kingdom there and fought to expand its territory. And because they were closer to the airways, they started speaking their language. And that's why they still, up to now, they still have the denture names. Look at the Vumekins. They have Nana Akono the first, Nana Akono the second, Nana. It's Akono and every name. No, they are dentures. You understand? How about the people of Peki? They also have uh, Akan names like that. Yes, because when, during that war, a lot of people fled from denture. Mm. You understand? Some, some of them fled, moved to so many places. 
move that seven of them establish the Achim kingdom. I will come there. I will come there. So after the 1702, the war, when they went and saw Okonfanochi, Okonfanochi was sitting on the golden stool of Rempian Pim, the uh, one point sim. Okay. You understand? Mm. It was Friday. Mm-hmm. They killed uh, 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 Intim Jakari, took the golden stool, and Okonfanochi blackened the stool to be the spirit of uh, Ashan- the new Ashanti kingdom. And it did not come from the sky. They took that, it was on Friday, they took it from Intim Jakari. That's what they call it, Sikejua Kofi. Because it was Friday that they took it from Intim Jakari. And Okonfanochi told them that, the golden stool is not powerful. Unless they go to Bojisango, that's the third, uh, friends, uh, the junior brother of Densha, to take the Jute Kudu, just a silver gold. Even up to now, when the two for it is coming, they, they lead him with the Jute Kudu. Busumburu Afna, Busumburu Che, Busumburu what? Che, Busumburu Okay. I heard something else. Busu- <laughs> Mm. I get it. But some Bruce had, you mm. understand. Mm. So, Konfanochi, mm. because of that, you know, Ashanti had to even go and fight with Adansu Bajo from 1700 to 17. They have the first series of battles with them from 1701. Nana, are you telling me that mm-hmm. the golden stool of the Ashanti mm-hmm. is, mm, is a stolen stool from the Dentra? Yes, and you know what? Right? Because they had stayed in the Dentra Palace, they had learned that the Dentra stool, which is Bank Kemdua, had descended from the sky. So they had to, in order to create a kingdom that is powerful like Dentra, you need to mimic their story. Oh. You understand? So the story of Okonfo Anochi chanting down the golden stool from the sky is fake. It's fake. It was taken from Intim Jaka on Friday at Feyasi. That is why in Dentra, our greatest office, the Kat Dentra Fiada, which is, I swear by Dentra Friday that we lost at uh, uh, Feyasi. Okay. You understand? Mm. And that was the day they took the golden stool from Dentra. That's why the golden stool is also called Kofi, mm. which is Friday. <laughs> that day that they threw the golden stool. The that day that they said, like, like Kokorachi has chanted down the, the golden stool. You understand? Do you think that it is that golden stool that is making the Ashanti kingdom powerful? No, I don't think so. I, I'll come in. I'll, I'll tell the reason Ashanti kingdom became powerful. Mm. And in the middle I can hear, the three kingdoms that had the golden stool, the first one was Dentra. The third one was uh, Jaman Hini. Mm. He also had the golden stool. And the, and the, and the third one was uh, Techima Hima. Jamedia. Jamedia also had the golden stool. You understand? But it was the denture stool that they blackened to be the embodiment or the spirit of the Ashanti kingdom. And they had to go to Bajisango to go and take the Busumbura Afana. So the Bajisangos fought with the Ashanti seven times and defeated the Ashantis. At that time, the chief of Bajisango was Nana Jakari Penyini and his uh, Jasenhini was Nana Edu Jenfi the first. They defeated the, uh, the Ashantis seven times. That was when Konfanachi had to go and invoke Sasabronsam to go and destroy Bajisango. And this woman, Anna Abena Pra, told them that in order to kill that monster, they had to use women's menstrual menses. Mm. Mess it in Chuma, which we call hematite mm. in geology. Mm. And, and uh, mix them with the gunpowder and shoot that monster and they'll kill it. The, and the Bajisango people did that and, and killed the animal. That's what Bajisango people say, we are Bajisango, those who killed Sasabon Sam. Mm. So later, the Ashantis gathered the armies and defeated the What's your relationship with the Aquamus? The relationship with the Aquamus. That's why I told you that now Akono at a point in time even led the Aquamus. Mm-hmm. You understand? Led the Aquamus. And wh- what happened was that Densha, our second brother, which is the Achim Kutuku, mm. after the uh, 1701 war, they also moved to Bonfa. You understand? Mm. And some, some of our people, led by Nana Ampim, uh, Nana Kwesi Ampim, uh, they established the uh, Bo- uh, Bosumi, Achim Bosumi kingdom. Mm. They also moved to Wasa, mm. to Chifu. Mm. And when they, they got to Chifu, they killed an elephant there. And the Chifu, he said that they should give him the elephant because that place belonged to him. And at that time, they said, no, they were not going to give. So they heard that their brother, which is Achim Kutoku, were at Bumfa. So they moved from Chifu to Ehrein. That was why uh, Achim Bosumi people, led by Nana Kwesim Pium, Nana Ntiamo, Nana Buampedu, go to Bumfa, uh, Ehrein with the Bumfa people. So at Bonfa, that was when Nana, uh, uh, Nana Fusuhina painting was a close friend of Nana Kuntun Kunuku. At that time, the Joseon Hina was Nana Kuntun Kunuku. Nana Kuntun Kunuku was studied from, was studying traditions from the Encha Palace. They became very close friend at that time with a, a Nana Fusuhina painting, whose uncle was the chief of Kutuku, who was a Fusuhina a, a painting. Mm. So at Bonfa, Ashanti people, and Ashanti realized that the second brother of Densha had moved to Bonfa. So they mount an attack on Achim Kutoku and killed Ufosuhini Apintin. 
You understand? Mm. So what's going to happen then? After you're defeated, you're succeeded by another from Paul Manson the first. Another from Paul Manson moved his people. And when they reached Asankari, Nana Kwachi do Pua was the chief of Asankari. When he saw Nana from Paul Manson and his two, he thought that no, they were going to what, kill him. So Nana Asankari, after he confronted Nana from Paul Boatin, Nana Boatin told him, no, no, we are from Dentra. And we are not going to kill him. So Asankari gave them a place between Jansa and Agogo to stay there. So now from four months, after he stayed there, he started mining at Konongo, Udumasi. You understand? Yes. Because of his denture. Denture, we always mine gold. So now from four months, the first started mining there. So Nana uh, Asante Hini realized that uh, Nana Asante Hini at that time, he placed the Jansa Hini and the Ananta Hini to spy on Achim Kutuku. And after the Bajisan War, he placed the Dadia Swaba. Dadia Swaba people were actually those people who were taking care of the denture, uh, guns and knives. You understand? They moved and joined the Asante. So Asante he told the Dadia Swaba people to spy on Bajisango and told Bant Mahini, Nana, Nana, Kwame Amankwetia. He was also a servant in Dentra to spy on Dentra. Amankwetia himself? Yes, Nana Amankwetia. I see. He was a servant in Dentra. Mm. All of them were people who were servants of Dentra. I see. Yes. So in after Nana from Paul Manson, uh, Osei Tutu the first, Told them man point here, then man point here, and they did that. You should go and fight Nana from Paul Manson. But when he got there, Nana uh, man point here realized that uh, Nana from Paul Manson had done well. He had mined gold and his kingdom has expanded again. So Nana, I, I, instead of fighting with Nana from Paul Manson, actually gave his three sisters mm. to Nana from Paul Manson uh, to marry. This and is 3FM. Nana mm. Nana Afaniwa. And Nana Eni also. Actually, Nana Santua Kesi was the one that uh, her descendant founded the Kou Mai. Kou, Kou Hini. And Nana, uh, 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 Nana Af uh, Afranua and Nana Eni also were those who founded Asantia Achim Shudim and Asantia Achim Domiambra. You understand? Mm. So, the Nana Jiman Pohin did not fight with Nana from Poor Mansu, but rather gave his sisters to marry Nana from Poor Mansu. Interesting. Yes. Let me ask you this: What, what, what um, was the relationship between um, Dentra and the people of the north, the northern, the, the people who call the people of the northern region right now? Because as you said, we came from the northern side, mm -hmm. Mali, and all that. Was there a relationship? Yes, there was a relationship with them. Mm. That's why in the history of Dentra, even when we were at Dentra, yeah, when we passed through Gonja land. We didn't fight with them. Mm. Even when we were at Enchra, mm. we didn't fight with them. Mm. Because we saw Enchra people as our benevolent uh, people who give us land. Which people? The Enchra people. Enchra. 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 Okay. Enchra. Okay. And the Nobu Gunjas, the Dagumes, who mm. are the descendants of Eja Biwa. Eyana mm. Biwa. Mm. Mm. We never fought with them. Mm. We were in good terms with the Northern people. Mm. You understand? Mm. Yes. And when we came here, it was Adansi who tried to subjugate us. That was when we conquered them and uh, expanded and gave them the traditions of the Bankemja, which are the Egyptian traditions. That's why when our king dies, we embalm them. Mm -hmm. Do you still do that? Yes. You don't bury them? We used to embalm them. Mm. You but now you don't do that? Now, because those, the, some of the, their customs are still there. Mm. The, the ancient people, they still do it. The, some of the elders, they still do it. You understand? So we pass those customs to Ashanti and all the peace speaking people. So you knew how to embalm we knew dead how to bodies? Embalm. Yes. But no more. You've lost all that skill. And that's why I don't like war. Mm. Whenever war happens, mm. People who have ancient knowledge, mm. people who have very rich knowledge, they are killed. They are killed. Mm. And when they die, sometimes this knowledge are only given to the initiates. Mm. Initiate of initiates. Yes. And yes. imagine they die. It means that we have to go and rebuild that knowledge system. That's true. That is how come we, Ghanaians, that is how come we, the interest, that's how come we, the Nordness, we've lost some of the ancient knowledge yes. we used to yeah. have in right. uh, Egypt and Sumer. Mm. Mm. It's not that we are dumb. We are not dumb. Mm. It's just that we lost a lot of uh, uh, intelligent people along the line through wars. Okay, so we're going to end it now. Um, what is the future of Dentra? Now that you have fallen to the lowest point as in the time of uh, Ntim Jakari 1701 Fesiasi war, um, how are you going to come up again? This is very fantastic. You see, Dentra did not fall. Dentra mm. just disintegrated into different uh, factions. 
Oh, uh, and Tim Jackari and his wife were killed. Yes. That, 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 that's a fall. Yes. Mm. Yes. That mm. is talking about the Fiyasu war. Mm. But if you look at that, if you look at Densha critically, mm. the Achimbo's mm-hmm. people are Densha. Achimbo's people are Densha. Women people are Densha. And if, uh, the Wasa, Wasa Kropon, they are all from Densha descent. You understand? If you call my Hene, the Achimbo's people are Densha. Uh, his husband is Achimbo's people. Yeah. You understand? And when Achim Kutoku kings dies, it is the Kouma who has to come and perform the rituals for Achim Kutoku king to be back. How are you coming back again as a powerful one entity Dentra again? Yes. Is it dentra, possible? It is even now, now it is even fantastic. Okay. When the Dentra king is installed, all those people who have the Dentra ancestry, including Anna Abrosika, who married Osei Tutu the first, including the Vume people, Achim Kutoku, uh, Borgesango, the and Kariye, all the people of Tutu, the people who have the Tutu drums, all the, the Asato people, all those people will come back. Oh, that, is that true? The and, people of Vome also yes, come? Yes, Vome. Vome. Yes, they are dangerous. Even wow. the, this funeral, when we were doing the funeral last year, mm-hmm. they, they, yes, they, they, they had wanted to come. You understand? But the thing is, it's not how do you, it's not about unity. It's Lensha. At that time, we told the accounts that a king, you are supposed to give your people uh, prosperity. Mm. You are supposed to give your people uh, protection. Mm. You are supposed to give your people customs and tradition that will help uplift their uh, socio-economic and spiritual life. When the Densha King is in, uh, in stool, he is supposed to make sure that he, together with uh, the other kings in Ghana, the Asante Hene, the Dagbon Hene, the Awumafia, the Gonja, and all those things. I like he, the Dagbon Hene. Yes. Yeah. He will unite with all mm. those kings to reposition the governance of Ghana. Because let me tell the truth, the chiefs are those who are responsible to develop Ghana. Mm. Yes, because they are the owners and the custodians mm-hmm. of the land. Mm-hmm. That is why a chief can say, when we were doing the funeral of Densha, in the Densha kingdom, we said nobody should play a drum. Yeah. All people didn't play the drum. Mm. When Asante Hene was doing uh, his mother's funeral, he said nobody should play a drum. No, no noise making. They all obeyed, right? Are you going to get your original drums and the golden stool? Back to Dentra. No, we are not going to get it back. You don't need it. No, we don't need it. It is we want to unite all the kings in Ghana here, the mm-hmm. Dentras. Mm. When I came to the forecourt of uh, uh, General Media, mm. I saw all the kings here. Mm. I saw the man Kesim here. Mm-hmm. You know, all these people were allies, uh, allies of uh, allies of Dentra. Were they slaves? They were not slaves. They were our allies. Mm. Nana Kujo Tibo, uh, in uh, 1824, mm. he resisted the Ashantis from taking over the Cape Coast castle. And he failed? No, and he won. Okay. He, he together with the Cape Coast, you know, a, a Cape Coast chief and the Mankesim, they, they won. Mm. In 1826, during the Battle of Dodua, Nana Kujo Tibo and all the other chiefs, they, they, approved, joined. they, yeah. they joined, and they defeated Ashantis yes. again. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ashim That's Kotoku, true. in mm. 1717, defeated uh, Ashanti. In 1717, I killed Osei Tutu in Pra, River Pra. You understand? In the olden days, eh, when you talk about Achim, it was Achim Kutoku. So it was a dangerous who so killed the dangerous Osei Tutu. Who killed Osei Tutu? The, the junior brother of Dentra, who killed Osei Tutu? Osei Tutu, who used to be right there who, with the dangerous. Exactly. Interesting. Yes. After he defeated the senior. Mm. We don't even call it defeat because Tim Jackie was just playing with the wife. Mm. We are not fighting. And at that time, all our generals had departed, left him. But the real war that Ashanti had with the dentures was the war between Ashanti and Kutuku. Mm. You understand? In 17, you, see, you see, it's so interesting that uh, Osei Tutu and Intim Jakari were engaged in a certain war at Feyiasi. And Intim Jakari was killed. Yes. Then the dentures came back later and killed Osei Tutu. How did the dentures not come back again as powerful? Yes. But rather, it's been declining. No. The... The reason why that happened was that eh, the second eh, brother of Densha, which is Achim Kutoku, took to the eastern side of Ghana. Okay. You understand? Mm. And Densha took to the central Ghana. So Densha protected the people of, on the coastal lines. And Achim Kutoku became a dominant force in the eastern region. Mm-hmm. That was why Nana, uh, uh, Nana Adwajiri Hene, Nana Efutu Dompre, was charged by Kutoku Hene to protect the Guans. Mm-hmm. The Guans from mm-hmm. the invasion of the uh, Aquemus. That's right. And even in 1730, the Nana from Paul Manson, together with Asin Hene, Nana, uh, Nana Kujo Tebo, joined forces and defeated the Aquemus. They are those who sacked Aquemus Hene from Nyanwasi to the current Aquemufi. Mm. You understand? Mm. So the interest, the name just changed, but they were still fighting and expanding their territories. Okay. In the name of, in the guise of Achim Kotoku and, and Achim Bosome. You understand? Mm-hmm. And when the chiefs come, now, Ghana, we are not going to f- 
fight wars again. Mm. You understand? Mm. Now, the most important thing for you black Rasta here, mm. for me and another body here, is that Ghana become a peaceful country and the chiefs and the kings will unite and position the politicians so that they will put in good policies to develop Ghana. Do you have a new king now? No. The new king is yet to be installed. Since 2016? Yes. Why? Why? Because indenture, like I told you, indenture king, Bank Kemja gave the order that when Edensha came for us, he was the, the stool, is the, the power of the stool is the one that's supposed to choose the new king. <clears throat> you understand? And in, 17, uh, in, in 1798, when Osei Tutu died, Buan Pun Sim died, mm. he was supposed to have given that power mm. to Asenso Kofo. And he didn't. They didn't. Now, they, 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 the elders of Densha, that's the Namaya in Swasara, that's the queen mother of Densha, together with the Bushapin and others, want to take their time and follow the instructions that the bank manager gave in 1500. You understand? And they will do that together with the Achim Kutoku Hene. That is Nana, uh, or CID or Dr. Frimpo Manso, the fourth. You understand? He and the other people will make sure that they do the right choosing. Until then, you are without a king. Until then, you are a people without a king. Until then, for now, you are a we people have, without yes, a king. Exactly. For now, wow. we don't have a king. Since 2016. Yes. My God. Yes. My God. Yes. 2016, that's about seven years now. Yes. You are without a king. Yes. So how do you rule yourselves? Yes. You've asked a very important question. In the ancient system, mm. whenever the king is no more, mm. we have the Kronkwa Hene, we have the traditional governance. We have the Kronkwa Hene, mm. the Jasi, the Ohima, the Bushampin, the other divisions that take over. So it is, the main head is not there, but they are kings and Royals who are taking you know charge of everything. Yes. I see. Nana Buwedu in Tiamua is my guest. And unfortunately, this is where we have to end it all. I know that it's been a little technical with uh, our non tree speaking um, people, our non account speaking people. But that is how it is sometimes if you have to get deep into some of these stories and all that he's been talking to us about Dentura. The past, the present, and the future. Ah, it's been quite interesting and I love it. Well, if there's any other thing you would like to add, please go ahead and add that as we. Say bye bye. Yes. Uh, to all those people who are from Densha, yes. I, would, I would want to tell Densha people that you are people who gave the typical tree speaking people their traditions and custom. Oh, t- oh, you don't speak typical tree? I mean, when I mean typical tree, I mean those people who say me say. Mm. You see, in the tree dialect, eh, mm. the people on the Fantis and the Bono people have the same similar dialect, like mm-hmm. the Grapims. Mm-hmm. Wasa and Zima, and they have the similar dialect. Mm. The Dentures and the Adansi and the Asantis, ours are also the same. That's why I say those who say the typical, that's Messi oh. people. The yes. Messi. The Messi people. Messi. Okay. Yes. Mm. Yes. If you are Dentra. So you, your, 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 your Akan and the Akan of the Ashantis is the same. It's the same. No difference. No, 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 no difference. It's mm. like actually, Ashanti came from Dentra. That's why Confanochi told them that it is a taboo to show the origin of any Ashanti. Well, about 70% of the Ashanti army all came from Dentra. So if you tell them that you people are not Ashanti, you people are Dentra, you people are Dentures, the kingdom will not, will not stand. Because when you put a taboo on that to show people where they come from, you understand? Yes. And if you are denture, wherever you are, you should be proud that it is your traditions and your systems that the Ashantis and other tree speaking people use in their governance. And whenever they are celebrating Ujra Festival, they are, whenever they are celebrating Akwesida, whenever, actually, after Intim Jacob was killed, Otu for a, a conference, told them that the Esumina Hene, Asante Hene, and Mampo Hene, are the only people who can dress like the Densha King. Mm. At that time, we had Akwemu, we had Bono, but Confani chose the Densha King because he was the only king who dressed like with gold. How do you see Okonfo Anochi? We do see him as an enemy or a friend of the Densha. Okonfo Anochi is, is not an enemy. You see... Is he a friend? Okonfo Anochi, at oh. a point in time, was oh. just taking a revenge. Because okay. something happened in Densha and he left. Mm. You understand? What happened? Uh, that one, that one, this bro said, that one I can't, I can't, I can't say. Is it a secret? It's a secret. That one I can't say. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, so he knew the secrets of Densha. Okay. That was why he was able to put in measures to, uh, you know, defeat it. Or comfort. And not she did something in Densha. Yes. That was shameful. Yes. And, and he left. Yes. We, did he sleep with somebody's woman? No, 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 no. Actually. Did he steal somebody's woman? No, thing? actually, we did something. See, there was a trance. He oh. was in a trance. Okay. And he requested for something. Okay. To be sacrificed. 
to to make the kingdom stronger. Mm. You understand? And something happened, which he got furious, mm. very pissed off. Mm. So Kofanaches look at the child was more of a revenge system. Okay. You understand? Mm. Exactly. So me personally, I don't see him. I see Kofanachi as a philosopher mm. who understood what Bankemja wanted. Mm. But what Bankem actually wanted was that we have to give our customs and tradition to the other accounts. Was he also a denture? Kofanache, he was a Ukuga. His father was from Ukuga, a Ukuga. But his mother was an Agona by Roya. You understand? Mm. Yes. And like that's why I told them when a Ukuga from Abril to a Ukuga, we have the Adewu people, some of the Adewu people there. You understand? Mm. Ad, like I told you, Adewu, Adewu Denchira. Mm. So that is why even. Now I'm you realize that the Adeo people have some our brothers to the dentures. But you are also called Agona people, right? Yes, yes. Why are you called Agona people alongside these um, Fantis and some other people like that? When you see the Fantis, any Fantis who are Agonas, it means they came from Dentra. Wow. In Ashanti Kingdom, the royals of the Ashanti Kingdom are the oil poors. That it means about half of the Ghana, present Ghana, actually came from Dentra. Yeah, they all moved from Dentra. Mm. Yes, even like I told you, Agona Suedru. They came from uh, Dentra, mm. led by Nana uh, Kwesi Ampim, Nana Intiamwa, Nana Buampedu. They passed through Wasa and they moved to Erwin and they moved through to. They were actually carrying a god called Katare. Katare? So, yeah, Katare mm. deity. So when they reached uh, what they call, currently call Suedru, the deity fell from the head and, and, and hit the ground. Do you believe in the deities? They work. You, do you believe in them? I believe in everything that has a name. Okay. <laughs> you understand? All right. So Including Sasabon Sam. Everything that has a name. Okay. You understand? All right. So when they reached Swedro, the, the poor just fell down and broke. And that's what they say, we have reached our destiny. They are so edru. They established their Achimbo Summit there. You understand? On that note, I would like to say thank you, Nana Buwedu <laughs> and Tiamwa. I do appreciate it, and I thank you for coming on the show. I thank you so much. We appreciate you. Now it's been the African History Class, and we have to go right now. Unfortunately, it's time to go.